I'm Sydney Hunt. Thank you for joining us for our next episode of Car Rider Line. Uh, today I'm joined by some regulars for this podcast episode. Um, Mr. Tony Davila, CCISD's Director of Parent Assistance, and Ms. Christina Ford, Assistant Director of Counseling and Student Services. Thank you both for being here. And as our listeners know, holiday break begins this week on Friday. And with that, um, could mean some stress for families throughout the holiday season. Um, and so especially for our students heading into a new semester when they return in January. So today we're going to talk through um, tips for both parents and students on ways to enjoy this holiday season um, and how to have a strong start to the second semester. So let's start off with the upcoming holidays and talk through kind of two different perspectives of students and parents and what it means for both. Uh, Tony, let's start off with some tips for parents. Yeah, so the first thing you want to think about is that um, stressed out parents make stressed out kids. And um, the holiday season is stressful for adults. And and I think we have to just kind of keep ourselves um, in check with that because that ultimately does impact our kids and, mm -hmm. and, and our students that, we're, um, that we love so much. And so the, the first thing I want to talk about really is, is grace. Um, grace for yourself. Um, let's just take, you know, uh, um, Chris or holiday dinner or a family gathering type of situation. Um, I think a lot of people go into those situations wanting everything to be perfect. And, and so in your mind, you have this idea that, you know, the turkey has to be cooked a certain way and everything had the time has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And, and what happens is inevitably, um, perfection doesn't happen. And so it leads to disappointment, which leads to stress, which leads to, you know, the kids feeling it as well. Mm -hmm. And so, the, the idea of grace is, is have grace for yourself. Go into it knowing there's probably something that's going to go wrong. There's probably something that's going to get overcooked. There's probably going to be a relative that may do something or say something mm -hmm. that you don't quite like, right? So um, go into it with that with that mentality of there's going to be a little bit of messiness, you know, mm -hmm. with all of the holidays. You may not get the perfect present, you know, for your child, or it may not be the exact version that they were <laughs> hoping. You know, all of those things that, that we want to try to do well as a parent and so instead of going in with this idea of perfection, go in there with this idea of grace. And I'm going to allow myself room for mistakes. I'm going to allow myself to enjoy the mistakes. And, and I think the other part of that is knowing that we are always teaching our kids, even in those situations. And so we can teach and show what grace under pressure looks like by going, okay, I overcook the turkey. You know, things like that happen. Mm -hmm. and, and so when those things happen, we pivot. We move on and we, you know, find a different solution. Cook um, something new. That. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> like, what can we do with burnt turkey that we couldn't right. do with regular turkey? And order so, takeout. Yeah, yes. order absolutely, takeout. absolutely, absolutely. So there's a new tradition of, you know, ordering takeout yes. on that day. Yeah. And, and so I, I think just if, if we can just, as adults, give ourselves the grace to, mm -hmm. to make those mistakes, I think what we can show our kids is far more valuable than that idea of what that perfect holiday, you know, two weeks is going to to look like and so I think that's that's the the huge piece um with that the, the second thing that I would suggest for for parents and, and just as kind of a challenge for everyone to do is in the mo in the middle of, of chaos so let's say you have a lot of people over at your house and, and there's you know 20 cousins and you know 10 uncles and aunts and all this stuff going on like at some point pause what you're doing take a look around, take a deep breath mm -hmm. and just absorb every single moment of that. Because the more my, my son is seven and, and I look back at Facebook posts and see when he was like one or two years mm -hmm. old. And I see other people who have kids that are 21, 22, and they, they, they'll post things from when they were four or five. Right. And, and what that always reminds me is just how quickly everything passes and how quickly time goes by. And so I, what I've done is there are moments when I will just try to absorb every single thing that I can within that moment. Um, because I know that at some point, you know, 15 years from now, I'll be posting, oh, those memories of when my son was in the house and when he was opening presents and things like that. And so within all the hecticness and all the hurriedness that the holidays bring, my challenge is for us as adults, take a moment, look around the maybe the chaos that's going around, take a deep breath and just smile and absorb every single moment, every single um, sound, every single smell, everything that we do. Um, and it kind of reminds me of a thing that we do for for anxiety, which is grounding, where we look at like five things you can see, four things that you mm -hmm. hear. But it's, it's not grounding to get through anxiety. It's grounding to really absorb everything you can about the moment just to make a mental stamp of like, this, this is where we're at, and I'm going to truly take that in. And so that's a challenge, um, almost a, a dare for mm -hmm. us as adults. At some point when it starts getting stressful, 
just stop and, and absorb every single piece that you can, um, f- even even within its chaos, and enjoy it mm-hmm. and, and model for our students what it is to be grace, you know, under fire. And I think we mentioned that, you know, this may be the first time that families are getting together after COVID. And so... Um, you know, taking that in and realizing all that we've been through, reflecting, it's a great time to reflect as well, right? Absolutely. And, and I think that is, um, you know, I think that that grace goes to the kids as well. Mm-hmm. You know, it is, um, there, there could be definitely some anxiety of seeing people that they haven't seen in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, that anxiety of what they're going to say about you. Cause I, I think as a kid, we all remember, you know, some grandma or uncle going, wow, you've, you know, changed and then, right. you know, whether that's a good or a bad, you know, so th- there's, there's a lot of, of that, um, you know, a pressure too when you see family and, and even for our kids that they don't really know what to expect. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we've harped on this in previous sessions, but that idea of predictability equals safety. Mm-hmm. I've seen it, if, you know, as adults, can we prep our kids of what's going to be happening soon? You know, what are our, schedule is going to look like, who we're going to be seeing, who may be there, who mm-hmm. may not be there as much as possible so that they have a, a general idea of what that's going to look like when they actually get there. Great tips. Christina, from a student perspective or child perspective, um, maybe what are some tips for those for those who need to maybe a reset for the next two weeks to help prepare for the next um, semester? Absolutely. I think we all need a reset yes. over the <laughs> next two weeks, right? For some of us, yeah. it's been an amazing yes. semester. For some of us, it could have been the hardest semester ever, right. just adjusting to different things. And we've had to come together in all different ways. So for students over these next two weeks, especially if you need a reset, remember, by the time we get out in about 48 hours from now, we will be doing early release. Yes. So, so your finals, if you're in secondary, your finals are done. For everyone, remember grading period is over, mm-hmm. right? Those grades are finalized mm-hmm. before you come back to school and, and reflect on some fun that you've been able to have. So it's the perfect time to do a couple things. And what I want you to remember is that over these next two weeks, if you really need to reset to rest. Mm -hmm. So when you're resting, try to recharge. What can you do for you to make sure that you're starting this semester the way you want to start? Can you be present? Tony talked about that a little bit ago with parents. Can you stop and enjoy that moment? Mm -hmm. You're going to step away from school because school's not happening over those two weeks. If you're working, can you take a step away from work? And remember, we talk about it all the time. You can't pour from an empty cup. And as students, you, you're not going to be able to reset your semester if you're not recharged. Some of you right now may be so excited about the holidays that your cup is overflowing. Mm-hmm. But some of you may be just like tipping it out, trying to get those last couple drops in to finish that final. So what can you do over those next two weeks to get back to that full cup or half full cup so that you can start over? Can you enjoy it? Like Tony said, even as a student, you know, some of those holiday things that your family's may do. You may roll your eyes. You may just say, okay, why? But really take a moment to just look around that room and enjoy the people that you're with. Um, It might be people you haven't seen in a Mm -hmm. long time. Can you put that phone down? Can you put that social media Mm -hmm. down and just be present with who you're, you're with? Can you do something fun? It doesn't have to cost money, but what is something fun? My family loves games. Can you play some games and just be in that moment trying to enjoy that time with whoever you're with? Or can you just find some solitude, some quiet time? Sometimes we need just time alone to reset. Also, when you're looking towards this next semester, can you sit back and reflect? You know, Tony talked about grace with with ourselves, with adults when we make mistakes. But as students, can you think back to what how your last semester went? And can you move forward? At the board meeting on Monday, Brooks Band was highlighted for um, going to state. Mm -hmm. And one of the um, band directors, and I'm going to say that totally wrong. Um, What is the name? What did I can't? I apologize. I'm just going (laughs) to say it wrong. I apologize. But talked about their goal was to go into state. And they were at a competition and they did not meet that goal that they wanted. And so they just reflected and they reset and they made it to state. So it's sitting and reflecting and and looking back. And then taking time for you as a student. What is something that you love that during that semester and all of the work that you're doing, all of the school, maybe the outside activities that you have, can you find something in this next two weeks 
to do for yourself. That's the hardest thing for me to do because we're always busy doing things for others. But what is something that you love? What is something that you can enjoy, even if it's just one minute during those next two weeks, to help you reset for that new semester? We've got to go in with a different mindset and a new, fresh mindset. It's a fresh start for all of us. So keeping to remind that. Love it. And if one of the things you love is reading, we have uh, CCIC does a winter reading challenge for awesome. all, all ages, but maybe more so geared towards the elementary level to make sure that they continue on, you know, just interacting and, and learning possibly over these longer breaks. And so we'll be publishing that information. So I wanted to give that a little it's plug a because it's call. a great way to, and some of the activities really interact with families. One of them is call your, you know, call someone on the phone and read them a book. So it's awesome. a, a different way to interact and makes reading fun. So that's one thing. So be on the lookout for that. So with the new year brings uh, new uh, opportunities for to set goals and new year's resolutions. And so Tony, can you talk through some of the ways parents Parents can set their own goals and maybe also how they can help students achieve uh, the goals that they set for themselves. Sure, absolutely. So this is the the time of year for resolutions, New Year's resolutions. Um, I think it's always you know a good resolution to to start getting healthy, and that's a common one um, amongst a lot of people. But I think. Th- a couple of ways or things to focus on as we look at the new year um, is to set some some family goals um, as a family. So talking with your student um, about you know what are some things you wish you could we could do more as a family. What are some things that you like doing? And I think that when parents do this, we're, it's always surprising sometimes the things that they enjoy more than others. And I know when I've asked my son about certain things. Um, The thing that I thought was a highlight of some type of trip or or something is like number three on his list. But Mm -hmm. the thing that was just some menial thing that was zero dollars and was just a side thing, Mm -hmm. that's what he remembers. I'm like, really, that you like that out of all the things we did today, (laughs) that was the one thing that really stuck in your head. And so just just asking them, what are what are the things that um, you want us to do? And then set a goal, you know, as a family that let's try to do that more often. So like, you know, game nights. I know that's that's one of the things that my son recently has been wanting to do. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we, we have a goal of having so many family game nights, you know, per month because uh, that's just something that he he really does. And so that's a, a, an example of like a family mm-hmm. um, goal that, that you're setting. Um, another example is, you know, we're going to set a, a goal as a family to eat at the table all together, you know, so many days out of the week because uh, that's a time where we, without our cell phones mm-hmm. and that's a time where we can be present. Um, we can actually talk to each other, um, have eye contact, and, and actually, you know, uh, look at each other. Um, but then I think also goals as a parent um, individually are important. And so, you know, think to yourself, you know, what what type of goals um, can I have? And, and that could be I'm going to check Skyward at least once a week, or I'm going to finally set up those notifications in Skyward to get, <laughs> you know, those types of things. Um, and not just setting those goals, but but how am I going to achieve that? So if, I, if I'm saying I'm going to check Skyward once a week, then maybe I set a, um, a timer or an alarm on my phone that says, mm-hmm. Check Skyward. Check mm-hmm. your check. Um, you know your son's grades uh, this week, and so um, so I, I think that just going into us having goals as a family, things that we're doing together, then goals as a parent as well, but not just a goal, but how how are we going to to do that? And so right. the best way to start is just to to ask ask your kids like what are the things that you really enjoy doing um, that you wish we could maybe do a little bit more of, and that, I think that's a good way just to start that conversation. And for for second semester for students, um, you know, it's really important for them to continue setting goals and maybe looking back, like you said, on the first semester and reflecting on that and using those reflections to set new obtainable goals. Absolutely. And we work really hard with throughout our district for students to set goals and making sure that those goals are realistic and that they're timely. And we're looking at short obtainable goals that we really can measure and we can actually do. And it's okay if you don't meet your goals. It's reflecting and adjusting Mm -hmm. those goals. So I think as we start the new semester, what I would challenge students to do is think about what you accomplished last semester and maybe what you weren't able to accomplish and how can you grow even more? What is something achievable that you can do? It doesn't have to only be with academics. Mm -hmm. If you play basketball, is it something that you're going to do within your basketball team? Is it practicing so that you can get better at shooting? Are you working towards an AP exam? Is it studying Mm a certain amount of times? Or if you're in elementary, is it a leadership role you want in a classroom? What do you have to do to obtain that? 
Or is it really in academics? Is it that you really want to get to a certain level in reading or something? So it's really thinking about that. And I would also challenge you to write it down somewhere. Share it with your parents. Share it with your teachers. If you don't want to actually write it, can you put it on the cover of your phone? Can it be that screensaver or a reminder to help you check and really look into those goals to make sure you're working and taking steps to achieve them? Maybe even having accountability friends yes. who, who know your goals, like yes. you said, and teachers who can help you mm-hmm. reach them. Absolutely. So for our older students, um, you know, this second semester is not a time to take <laughs> a break or stop caring about grades. And yes. so what are some tips you have for these older students finishing off the year strong? So our seniors, you are in the you have, have the light at the end of the mm-hmm. tunnel. It, this next semester is your last semester of your academic career mm-hmm. in Clear Creek ISD. And my one piece of advice is finish strong. A lot of you know what your post-secondary plans are. A lot of you know what your goal is going to be. Some of you may not, and that's okay, but a lot of us do. And we tend in this last semester to to kind of think I'm done. I've applied. I'm just going to forget about this. But remember that final transcript still has to go to your colleges or wherever you're planning on going. And there's so many fun senior activities going on that you don't want to maybe slack off a little bit to where you can attend those. So keep that goal in mind. We're constantly working for that. And for our juniors, Mm -hmm. even our freshmen and sophomores, remember colleges look at six semesters to apply. So juniors, you're in that last semester to get really um, focusing on what you want to do and what you want to accomplish so that when you're applying to colleges next semester, you've got those six semesters that you can shine on. Awesome. Great tips, guys. Do you you think we missed anything? Anything else you'd like to add? I think that's, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Thank you Enjoy. Y'all both. Rest. Yes, right? rest. Yes. Everyone deserves it. I know it. we're going to go and yes. rest too after yes. this. So yes. thank you all for be- thank you for being here and thank you for tuning in. Um, that's it for this episode of Car Rider Line. And we will be back after the holiday break with some exciting new episodes. So be on the lookout for those. Um, this episode will be available for playback and published on all podcasting sites. So if you want to listen to the audio later or over the break, um, as you need reminders, um, you can do that as well. So until then, we'll see you next time.